So what do you say we spend a little time in the garden today? All right, all right, all right. It's finally dried up a little bit, warmed up a little bit here, and I've got to get my onions, my elephant garlic, and my leeks fertilized before we get some more rain. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get our boots on, and we'll head out there to that allium plot and uh, get her done. So we've got our allium plot right here behind me, a 30 by 35 plot where we've got eight different rows of short day onions. We've got two rows of elephant garlic and we've got one double row of Tadorna leeks. And if you've watched some of our onion videos before, you might've heard of our kind of fertilization schedule or plan when we grow onions. When we plant onions, when we put them in the ground, or garlic or leeks or any allium for that matter we like to give them a complete or balanced fertilizer early and the phosphorus and the potassium there and that balanced fertilizer is going to stimulate some good root development early on but once these things get up and going we want to just give them some straight nitrogen alliums are heavy feeders they'll perform better they'll make bigger harvest if you give them plenty of nitrogen, plenty of water as well too. So now we're at the point where we just want to give them some nitrogen. We gave them some of that complete or balanced fertilizer earlier. We injected some 20-20-20 with our little horse fertilizer injector through the drip tape, fed those guys well early. You could also do that organically with our granular complete organic fertilizer if you want to be strictly organic about it. So <clears throat> you can do it either way. Just give yourself a little more time if you're using the organic fertilizer because it does take a little more time to break down and actually be usable by the plant. Now, as far as when I switch over to the straight nitrogen, it's not like an exact time frame. And I really would have liked to have done this about three or four weeks ago. But it's just been tricky with the weather around here. It'll rain a lot and then be cold. And just hasn't dried out well and it's just been tricky but we got some a decent amount of rain about three or four days ago and the last few days we've got close to 70 degrees in the afternoon so everything's dried up a little bit i've been in here with the wheel hoed kind of helped dry it out a little bit and i've got a good window to go ahead and get some of this fertilizer uh, side dress beside these onions here before some more rain comes in in the next few days now as we do this especially with the onions you'll notice some varying degrees of growth here and that's just because we didn't plant all these at the same time this first row here which is uh much further along was planted kind of late october the next two rows were planted a week or so later and then all the rest of these that are a little smaller were planted a few weeks later than that i think around mid-november or so so that's why you see kind of different stages here it isn't that one variety is growing so much better than the other is strictly a result of when we planted them in the future i think i'm gonna just try to get them all on the ground in late october or so so we've got our onions there and we've got our elephant garlic over here two rows of those and then we've got our leeks. We transplanted these on a previous video and uh, they're coming along pretty good there, as you can see. One thing I've been really diligent about this year is keeping the weeds down in my onions. I noticed last year and in previous years when I used to grow these things on double rows, so imagine if I had another row of onions right here and the drip tape in the middle, that over time it was harder to keep the weeds under control in between here and i saw just some direct evidence that if you let the weeds get out of control here you won't make near as big an onion so keeping these things clean is really important and i've been able to do that a lot easier with single rows than i was with the double rows the only real weed issue i get in here is this stuff right here this chick weed and this is some pretty persistent stuff down here this time of year and you can use the the wheel hoe kind of flip it over i come in here with my single tine cultivator and kind of scratch it out out. but uh, it doesn't really get hot enough to bake it on top of the soil sometimes so sometimes if it's a big piece I'll just have to kind of throw it out of the garden there's another one right there pretty good root structure on those weeds there 
and uh, this stuff can be pesky this time of year but we definitely don't want to let it go to seed and become a problem in future cool seasons around here so when we see it I want to make sure we get out of here and not let it get much bigger than that now back to the fertilization principle here so when do we switch over from the balance to the straight nitrogen fertilizer and i like to do it when they're about this size or maybe even a little smaller those first couple rows over there like i said i'm late to the party on that but these right here when they get about this size you know when they start growing you can feel it's real secure in the ground nice good root structure there um, got some getting some good vegetation on them but obviously won't want more than that so i'd say about this size is when it's a good time to really start pumping the nitrogen now what you don't want to do is fertilize these guys after they start bulbing so we don't want to give them any fertilizer once they're in that bulbing phase but how do you know when that bulbing phase starts well it has a lot to do with the day length where you are if you're in a short day intermediate day or long day growing region but i'll show you how i know when the bulbing starts around here so let's take a look at this guy right here this is probably one of the bigger ones i've got in this entire plot this is a variety called plethora and this is one of the ones i planted back in late october and you can see the base of that is getting pretty big but it hasn't really started bulbing yet when i say bulbing i mean the the bottom of that onion there is going to really start increasing in diameter pretty fast now how can we tell when this starts happening well for me it's always a really easy indication you will see the ground start to crack here now, if i look around here i don't really see the ground start cracking or it hasn't started to crack yet but when that happens that's when we know that the bulbing phase has begun so we'll see little cracks start to develop around here in the soil and that's when we don't want to fertilize them anymore we want to cut off the fertilizer at that point so we're not quite there yet might get there soon we're going to hit them at least one time before they start bulbing here and uh, hopefully we will have timed it just right so now let's talk about what we're going to use to really give the nitrogen to these guys and we got a couple different options here depending on really if you're strictly organic or if that doesn't matter as much to you so if you're organic you probably want to use this stuff right here our organic nitrogen also known as chilean nitrate we use this a lot on corn, but you can use it on onions. It's a 1502 analysis on there. Works great going inside dress with some of this and give them onions the nitrogen they need. So that's your organic option. I'm gonna be using this stuff right here today, this ammonium sulfate. And I like this because it's got sulfur in it. If you know anything about growing onions, they like a little extra sulfur. And if you want your onions to taste like onions, um you gotta give them some sulfur that's where that kind of pungent onion flavor comes from is from the sulfur there i don't like my onions to taste just like a big ball of water i want them to taste like an onion i want them to impart flavor in whatever dish i'm using them in and so that's why i like using this ammonia sulfate here this also has a little bit more nitrogen this is 21 percent versus 15 percent on that chilean nitrate now this stuff here is water soluble you can put it in our fertilizer injector and inject it i've done that before works great today we're just going to be side dressing with it because we know we got some rain coming in the next day or two and uh should work out just right so if we look at our directions here it says side dress with one cup per 20 feet of linear row my rows in this plot are 30 foot long so i'll use one and a half cups per row and it says apply every three to four weeks and water immediately after feeding i'm not going to worry about the water part because we're supposed to get some rain in the next few days so i won't worry about that there if you're not getting rain soon you do want to water it in there and um, applying every three to four weeks on some of those larger onions that may start bulbing soon we may only get one application of this in there but for some of those smaller ones that were planted later we might be able to get several applications in before they start bulbing and when you're doing this or when you're applying any kind of granular high nitrogen fertilizer like this you want to make sure you don't get it on the foliage because it can burn the foliage you especially want to make sure it doesn't get stuck down inside that plant there because it can burn the plant so we want to put it you know on the outside of the row here so we're not touching the foliage keep in mind nitrogen is a fairly mobile 
nutrient in the soil so we can put it out here and it will still get uh, to those plants well you can see even some of these feeder roots from the onions are sticking all the way out here so they'll be able to access it pretty well so we're just going to come in here and we'll just put it kind of alongside this row right here trying to make sure we don't get it on the foliage too much so we don't burn those plants Right, all right, all right. That was quick and easy. Some of you might be wondering how many rows can you do with this 10 pound bag of ammonia sulfate here? I didn't quite use all of it. There's probably enough in there for another row or two. But anyway, I have eight rows of onions, two rows of garlic, two rows of leeks. So 12 total rows here, 12 30 foot rows. And I used almost a 10 pound bag. So that should give you an idea of how far a 10 pound bag will go based on how many row feet you have. So now all we need to do is kind of scratch this in the soil a little bit. I have used the wheel hoe before to do this. It works great for it with the cultivator teeth on there, but I haven't been long wheel hoed this plot just a day or two ago. So I really don't need to go through there with a wheel hoe again. And just to be quick and uh, easy with it, going to use this guy right here a little three tine cultivator just going to drag it alongside the row where I applied that fertilizer kind of scratch it into the soil so uh, those nutrients can get down there to those plant roots now one more thing to mention before I scratch this in here with my three tine cultivator another way to do this although more time consuming <clears throat> but it works well some people will come in here and actually dig them a little trench down in here and put their fertilizer in that trench and then fold over or cover that trench. And that works great as well. It takes a little more time to do it that way. And if I didn't have so many onions, I might consider doing it that way. But for me, this works just fine here, kind of scratching into the soil. And as soon as we get some water, some rain on top of this, it'll dissolve all these little fertilizer pellets and we shouldn't have any issue with nutrient availability there. So always more than one way to skin a cat. This is just a fast and easy way for me. But if you like to do the trench method, you can give that try. Give that a try as well. And there we go. Better late than never, right? And I know a lot of you guys out there haven't even planted onions yet. And although planting times will vary depending on if you live in a short day, intermediate day, or long day onion region, the fertilizer schedule is pretty much the same. You want to give them that balanced fertilizer initially and then switch over to straight nitrogen right up until when that bulbing phase starts. One more thing about onion sweetness that a lot of people are confused about. A lot of people think that certain varieties are sweeter than others. And that is the case if you take something like a yellow sweet onion or granix onion and compare it to a white or red onion, the granix or the yellow onion is always going to be sweeter than those two. But as far as yellow onions go, the sweetness is primarily determined by how much water you give it. So the more water that's in that bulb there, the sweeter it's going to be, the less water the more sulfur that's in there, the more pungent it's gonna be. We want our onions to be nice and big. We want them to have plenty of water in them, but we also want them to have that sulfur in there so we get that really good onion flavor. So if any of you out there have any more questions about growing or fertilizing onions, definitely put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. If you've got onions in the ground right now, definitely let me know how they're doing, kind of what stage you're in, what phase of uh, fertilization you're in or maybe you've got some like mine that are looking like they're starting to bulb pretty soon so let me know how your onions are doing and give me any onion questions you may have i'll put a link below to our ammonium sulfate fertilizer so you can go grab you some of that for your onions garlic leeks whatever alliums you're growing if you enjoyed this video give me a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video and if you enjoyed this one check out these other two onion videos right here i think you'll really enjoy those as well we'll see you next time